So this is our creative development team. Uh, Justin Cleary, Eric Listening, Chris Polowski, and me, Chris Brackett. Where would we be without the uses of previous knowledge, technology, inventions, and techniques? Without the creation of the first programmable computer, how do we have an advanced and easy to use GUI? Without the creation of the GUI, how could 80% of all people within the US own and operate a computer? We would be where we were started. The differentiating key of human beings lies within being able to expand upon each other's ideas. And based upon this, gives us the idea of kin for win. And this is just the beginning. So Kim for Win is an application that we've designed to actually navigate the Windows interface using Connect. And our idea is more towards like a presentation format, large screen type navigation. Um, and we have implemented using the mouse with the right hand, as well as gestures for swiping up, swiping down, and left to right with the, uh, with the left hand. So that way we can um, navigate through our application to go to different shortcuts for applications and then once you get into an application such as a browser you can scroll up and down a page or uh, if you're in Windows Media Center you can scroll through the menus in Windows Media Center using a gesture rather than having to use the mouse everywhere you go. In addition to the uh, gestures and actual connect integration with movement we've got voice activation so you can say something like open word or um, you know, open browser. And we also have uh, implemented a search. So when you open the browser, uh, the, Google, uh, the Google web page comes up and we can say search and it'll do the shortcut in order to open up search on Google and use voice search to go to uh, search Google. So the actual PC Connect requirements, they don't differ from the previous Connect group. Um, these are just the basic requirements for the SDK, uh, what Microsoft has actually uh, dedicated for the Windows Connect sensor. Um, so 2.66 gigahertz processor, two gigabytes of memory, a USB uh, port for the actual sensor, as well as two gigabytes of disk space. Um, while the group before us, said that it would probably run on a lower end computer. Because we are actually doing an interface across the actual you know, desktop, it's probably best to keep, for our pro uh, program to keep these requirements just because um, we need a little bit more precise movement for the mouse as well as the gestures. How does it work? Um, okay, essentially our program has two separate components that uh, allow it to function. First we have the Windows host, and through that the uh, initial GUI is loaded, all the images, and another big component is the keyboard commands. We interface with the uh, keyboard event through uh, the Microsoft <coughs> Run DLL, uh, and we can issue any keyboard command so that way we can control uniformly across each program. Uh, the next section is the Connect API. And essentially, this handles all the Connect-related functions. Microsoft released the Windows for Connect in uh, uh, official SDK in February. So our uh, gesture functions, which are handled through an event, uh, are managed, as well as the main event handling, which pertains to the camera processing the um, skeleton and mapping it to the cursor, and that sort of features. Connect miscellaneous deals with uh, exceptions, such as uh, removing the camera. And speech recognition engine deals with all of our speech commands. Now the possibilities with Kim for Win are actually pretty endless. Um, you can just imagine a police station, you're a detective, you have your giant screen set up, you know, you have your yarn and pictures all set through, and you can just swipe through and go through each profile of each criminal. Or you're in a doctor's office and he's going through the patron's records, or he's, you know, a surgeon, they're sterilized, they can't touch anything. They're uh, switching through x-rays and such. Um, if you're doing a showcase or a presentation, uh, the car showcase, you can angle it and go through 3D models and move around them. Um, and with this, we'll show you our demo. <coughs> So 
So this is our basic user interface. We just figured to uh, make a GUI and make it a lot easier to, um, you know, navigate through. Oh, apparently we are not connected. Can you check on the bottom? Oh. So we can go through some of the other things first. Well, let's just open the help first so we can kind of see what the commands are. So this is our command-based window, and it shows you on the left-hand side here what, um, what commands for gestures you have, and then um, based on clicks and voice recognition, what each application up here will allow you to do. And we can put it a uh, back button here. We can click it. So if we just, you know, first thing, open up the uh, web browser. Then I can say search for. Search for Oakland University. Go. That basically initiates it, and then I can actually go through and select anything I want, just if you could with a mouse. Oops. And then I can say close window. It'll close the active window. Do you want to add something? Yeah, the mouse clicks are actually biased off the head. We take the distance from the camera to your head, and we add a um, predetermined millimeter range. And as soon as we uh, past this threshold, we issue a clip to the system via the Windows host. And so that gives me the ability to where I can move around, and the clicks will still work. Now, there is a bit of a caveat, is if the further left I move, the harder it is to reach the right corner, or the, the left corner, likewise with the right. But, um, you know, given the time that we had and being able to reach all the corners very easily, being able to access anything that we need to access here um, has made it quite simple, you know. And that registered a click based off of me putting my hand too far out. Close window. Home. And if I want to open Windows Media Center, I can show you some of the gestures that we've been implemented through Windows Media Center. Now these gestures are application specific which means that um, these gestures would only be valid within certain applications. So as of right now, we can scroll up. Keep scrolling up. And then what we have to implement is a breakpoint in between each scroll. The breakpoint is something that was giving us a little bit of trouble because um, the gestures are actually the last thing that we implemented. Um, and, if, if, and if I could add something as well, the, the gestures aren't actually built into the SDK. What we had to do is essentially do some research and talk to the forums to be able to uh, speak with some of the people that are developing for the uh, Connect. And what it does is it uses an actual um, it uses an actual equation to tell the difference between I'm um, you know I'm moving up so the x is going you know the x is going up where or the y is going up where the x is not moving at all and um, we were able to find some code for the x and y or for actually swiping side to side and then we actually were able to write, you know, based on that equation, we were able to write the swipes for up and down as well. But if you put your hand on it. Yeah, I mean, so, then I can swipe over. I, the, the shadows, like they were saying before with the fan, the shadows often, you know, throw it off a bit. I guarantee it's seeing my shadow on the screen over here. Um, and these are all, you know, little things that obviously can be improved upon, but the technology is really what we're trying to emphasize. And the fact that this is something that really hasn't been done before. And 
you know, being able to interact with an application, application-specific gestures, application-specific voice commands, is really something that is just um, brand new. And it's actually pretty great that, you know, they've come out with this in order and made it open source so that, you know, people who, like our team can actually work with it. Closed window. And also to touch on the, uh, the third-party software, um, the difference between the third-party software and this software is we can actually sell this product. If we were to use um, any of the third-party implementations of the Xbox Connect, that would actually be violating Microsoft's terms of service for commercial use. So, uh, plus this is a lot easier to work with as an SDK versus where you're, if you're running code through the Xbox SDK, it's a lot more difficult. And you, it's probably the hard, most difficult using something that um, the you know, third party development community has done. So. Um, is there any questions, anything that anybody would like to see based off of the gestures that we've shown? Um, I know the, the voice recognition was, is it you specific or? I'll, I'll tell you about it. I mean, no, it picks up. There, we, we set it up so that there's basically an array and you can specify the width that it's listening for. So I think it's up to 180 degrees. So everything that's in front of the sensor and then you can minimize it to a point to where it's actually, you know, close window to where it's actually very person specific. So I can do it to where it's a range of, you know, five feet in front of the sensor or um, width of five feet. And it's, it would actually be millimeters, but. When you guys did these vertical scrolling, um, you said like no X, Y didn't know, which is very difficult to do. Like, well, did you have a range to it, or? Well, what the, the, that's another thing that's great about the SDK. If Microsoft's coded in like an anti-jitter function, if you saw like the previous developments and like the class can vouch for it, we would be moving the mouse and it would be jumping all over the place. Whereas now you've got a much smoother movement because Microsoft implemented that jitter function. So it's taking, you know, the little shake, you know, the shakiness of your hand and actually smoothing it out. So that way, uh, and plus there's a little threshold. I mean, we didn't make it exactly, you know, we, I think we had a small threshold so that if it, you know. Oh, to answer you, yeah, yes, the, we did implement those separately though. And we, you know, he actually did the gestures which he made it. Um, specific for each gesture, if you want to go more into that question. Yeah, the, um, each gesture, as soon as you select something from our interface, it actually modifies a um, variable in the, in the main class and allows it to, um, to every time you do, it, it triggers the gesture event, it will uh, do the application specific gesture. So it's all basically done through the uh, GUI. And additionally, each gesture is based off of a time the time it takes to move from a certain range. As you can see, the logout for function works. <laughs> so the idea behind this, though, uh, this is really just, we wanted to get it working, get something working to where um, it was recognizing us, we could work with the computer, but Ideally, making an application for this, and, and in a business sense, it would work perfectly. Uh, I would say a goal of replacing every single two-dimensional directory in the world would be a great goal. You know, um, if you can imagine, even around Open, where we have the little boards of showing you where you need to go, where class, you know, where buildings are, classes are. If it's replaced with a TV monitor and uh, the Connect. People can stand in one spot and scroll through everything they need. And if it's a mall, um, oh, I want to see this store, and they click on it, and the store website pops up. And it's as simple as using a, a very simple help um, solution where people can see what they can say, what they can do, what gestures they can move. And that's more application-based rather than dealing with the computer itself. But building this technology you know, for the desktop is really expanding you know, what applications can be built with it, and in a business sense, what it can be used for. Did you <clears throat> let other people use it to see how intuitive it is? We did, probably not as much as the other team. Um, 
my wife used it quite a bit. Um, she was testing it out, and she wanted to know when she could start, you know, just watching movies, uh, sitting on the couch and not having to search for the remote that the dog stole, or, you know, things like that. And I had a couple of friends come over and, you know, test it out. I think that they had the same. But all in all, there's probably about 10 other people besides us who, um, who got some use out of it. And um, a lot of my friends weren't, you know, they're not programmers or they're not computer savvy all that much and they it just kind of blew them away they, they didn't think it was possible you know and my mom was trying to use it it was kind of kind of funny but she was able to you know grasp it and um, you know she she actually used it really well so um, I mean that's just kind of a range of you know people and skill sets that this can be used with and for Are the gestures and everything customizable yeah. the terms Yes, 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 and it, it all goes back to uh, uh, using the Windows uh, events to be able to issue any command and knowing what application you're in. So, if, for instance, we had Netflix up here, we could do Netflix specific commands that you would normally do with the keyboard. Yeah, just like we uh, we have, you can do like the click for um, PowerPoint or map something to the arrows um, in order to switch sides and fuzzy or something like that. And in, in so. Paint, you didn't, if you swipe back, oh. you got Control Z. So if you're writing your name and you screw up, you could swipe back and uh, go back a step. So it goes like per app? Yes. Or so the user can customize like uh, gestures? Not currently, no. So I mean, I registered my drawing and, you know, <laughs> can I do whatever I want. Close window. And ideally, this is where we would like to have the bigger buttons or more precision, which, you know, it can be. Yeah, it's also like you want to put a different uh, close window. window. By the very nature of having this uh, click, right, it's all like you're going to move. Right? And that's the thing. And that's where it's like almost like if you did a voice instead of like click. And it, by the end of it, we were saying, you know, it's with with the settings that the computer has as it is right now and without being able to create bigger buttons, it might be easier just to have a hover function for as it clicked. But then how long do you wait? Two seconds, one second, three seconds? Did they not mean to click that? You know, did they mean to click it? You know, so there are caveats, but um, you know, all in all it, it was really trying to focus on the overall technology rather than like one specific um, you know, caveat that we have come for us. <clears throat> so one other thing, um, for the, the voice, um, if you say the word you know, home in the context of something else, would it go um, if you're just talking? Or, uh, or do you have those different commands? Like? The commands are hard-coded as of right now. So home, so if I say home, it means I had a browser open. Or open browser. Um, <laughs> You know, and then if I say open browser, search for Oakland University, go, browser home, browser home, so technically, you know, I mean, it, it should you know, they're, they're application specific in that sense, but they're hard for to, to answer your question. Right, so if you're saying it like, I'm going to go home, and then we'll go home. So I pick up that. Yeah. Yeah. Initially, we had it so that, uh, and we could all, we were thinking about possibly putting it back where we can just say voice control off. But then you have to, we'd have to put it in the settings menu to turn it back on, because obviously you can't tell it to turn the voice control back on. But I mean, that's really, with any voice recognition software, you're going to run into that. I mean, I've got Xbox Connect and I've got some voice control too, and it'll recognize stuff from a movie. Like I was watching Fast Five the other day, and all of a sudden, every something pauses and fast forwards to the entire movie. <laughs> so, I mean, even Microsoft hasn't gotten that far right. So you can you can imagine. Anybody else? I think we're hitting our time point here. Thank you very much.